So welcome to Techno Dad Life, and my name is Jeff, and so today I'll show you how I made this into my new media server with Linux and Open Media Vault. So basically you have four options. So one is Parallel Desktop, where you buy, I think it's $80, and then you install Linux that way. We're gonna go over the no cost ways of doing it. So first there is uh, dual booting, but I was not able to do that uh, following the directions that were on the internet, which are a few years old. So I would not recommend that. And so what we're gonna do instead is actually install Open Media Vault directly onto the disk or install Debian and then Open Media Vault over that. So first you want to back up anything that you have on the computer. If you have another Mac, you can do a time machine. Otherwise, just transfer it to a disk. Next, you want to create an installation media so that, so if you ever decide to sell your Mac, you can actually install Mac OS back on it, which most people will be looking for rather than a Linux server. Now, this particular Mac is the 2012 version, so you can install dual hard drives and you can upgrade the memory. Now in that kit, you'll get a hard drive attachment to attach the second hard drive. I would actually make sure you get them both for the bottom hard drive and the top hard drive. Uh, so my hard drive was attached for so long that when I pulled the drive out, I actually bent some pins on the top hard drive. So now I have to order another kit because I have to replace the original hard drive attachment, which was not with my original kit. So just plan ahead and uh, just get that extra hard drive attachment. So today we're just gonna be installing on one hard disk, but if you have two hard disks, you can follow the same directions uh, because it will be exactly the same. So first we're gonna download a program called Bella and Etcher, and then I'll explain uh, two ways of installing things. So download Bella and Etcher and install. Next we have two options. So we can install Debian and then install OMV over that through the simple script from OMV Extras, or we can straight install OMV. The benefit to installing Debian and then the install script from OMV Extras is that OMV Extras is installed automatically. Otherwise, there's not really much of a difference at this moment in time. To download OMV, click on Download, then click on Here, and then click on 5.5.11, and then Download Latest Version. Now that will take a few minutes, so it's time for a cup of coffee. Once that's done, you can open up Bella Anna Etcher. You need to get a different flash drive, and here you can see I marked mine OMV, so I know which one it is. And then you need to install this into the Mac, and then initialize it if it needs initializing. Then we're gonna click Flash from File, go to our Open Media Vault file, click Open, select Target, there's our USB drive, Select, and then Flash. And then type in your password. OK. And OK. Time for more coffee. Once that's done, uh, just click Ignore. And now we can reboot our system. So go up to the Apple and then click Restart. And then while it's restarting, make sure you press the Option Alt key. And then that will take you to this screen, and then just tab over to EFI Boot, hit Enter, and then hit Enter again to install. Pick your language, enter your country, your key map, and here you can change your host name if you want. I'm just gonna keep it at Open Media Vault. Select a root password, and then type that in again. And of course you have to do them the same your time zone, and then hit continue for your storage system. And then we're going to use the whole disk, and then tab to yes. And so now it's installing the operating system, so time for some more coffee. 
And then here, this is to select a mirror, just pick your country. And the default is OK here. And we don't have any proxies. So now at this point, you want to remove the USB drive and restart your server. Look up there in the top right corner. It says the username is admin and the password is OpenMediaVault. So next, what we're going to do is log in here. And so we're going to log in as root in our password that we just put in. So type in root and whatever password you put in. And so the next thing we're going to do is type IPADDR and hit enter. Now you can see the fifth line from the bottom actually tells us our IP address. And so for me, it's 192.168.8.189. So now we're going to go to my laptop. We're going to type in that address, and the rest of the things we need to do with OpenMedia Vault will do directly from the laptop. So next, we want to go to our web browser, type in 192.168.189, which was for us. Hit enter. It will take us to this login page. We'll type admin, and then OpenMedia Vault, and then click login. So now we're into the Open Media Vault UI, and so we're going to just quickly go through some settings so you can understand them and get you on your way. So right here, it tells us our services that are running, and currently just SSH is running. Uh, we'll want to enable SMB, which is for Windows file sharing if you have Windows machines. You can also do NFS, FTP, and rsync. Down below, it tells us what version we're on. It tells us about our processor and our current kernel, the system time, and then how long it's been up for. So next, we'll go to general settings. And so we want to change a few things here. So you want to change this to one day. Uh, otherwise, this will log you out after five minutes, which is very frustrating. Click Save, Apply, and Yes. Next, go to Web Admin, and then you need to type in a new password for your login, uh, and then click Save. Because you always want a strong password uh, if you have a server, just make sure it's one you can remember. Now we'll go to Date and Time, and then put in your time zone for the city you live. Click on NTP Server to, so it turns green, and then click Save. Network, we're going to go to Interfaces. It will show you your network adapters. You can click Edit. If you wanted to add a DNS server, you would put that right in here and then click Save. If you do add a DNS server now, it will change your IP address on your local network. So you won't be able to log back into uh, with the same IP address. So just make sure that you realize that uh, when you can't log back into your Open Meeting Vault. Notifications is to set up notifications uh, when events happen on your server. Power management gives you the option to automatically shut down or stand by, and you can schedule that. Monitor monitoring keeps statistics on your server. Certificates, you can add SSH or SSL certificates. Schedule jobs, you can add Chrome jobs either by the minute, hour, month, day or a year. Update managers is where all your updates will show up. You'd simply click in this box right here and then click install. Now plugins are where all your Open Media Vault plugins show up, but we're going to add in the Open Media Vault Extras plugin. So, so we're going to open up a new window, uh, type in omb-extras.org, and this will bring us to the OMB wiki. We're going to scroll down, and right here it says for a quick install of OpenMediaVault Extras, run the following command as root. So to do this, we need to open up a terminal and then SSH into our server, and then we'll paste in that line, and then that will install OpenMediaVault Extras. So open Spotlight, type in terminal, and then that will install or open up terminal. So now we're going to SSH in, so we'll type SSH, and then type in root at our IP address, and then hit enter. 
And then you'll need your password that you added when you were installing Open Media Vault. So now we're logged into Open Media Vault, and so what we're going to do next is install that script that adds all the Open Media Vault extras. So now we're going to copy that script, go back to our terminal, and then paste that in. Then we're going to hit enter. So now it's going to run an install script where it will add the Open Media Vault extras repository. And then when that's done, you can close that window. Go back to Open Media Vault, and we are going to refresh this page. Next, we're going to go to OMV Extras, and we'll take a look at that. And it says Backports Extras Testing. So the only one we need enabled is Backports. And then you can add Dockers, Cockpits, and you can change the kernel version, and it has other things. Next, we're going to go to Plugins. And so we're going to add a couple of plugins here. So share root FSS. So this will allow us to use the unused portion of our root disk. So Open Media Vault itself only takes about 8 gigabytes. And so then if, like in this case, we have a 240 gig hard drive, we can use the rest of those gigabytes as for our file system. So when you enable it, it turns yellow, and then just some other ones we're going to add right now, flash memory plugin moves all temporary files to your RAM so it's not writing to your disk. Then we're going to click install, then yes. Now that will install all those packages that we just enabled. Once that's done, it will say done here and then you can close that and it will reload the page. And if you scroll down, now we have a flash memory plugin. And so this is enabled by default, so you can't do anything. If you want to do the absolute most extra, right here is where you do it. Uh, the one thing though, if you do this part wrong, if you do the extra part wrong, then it could make your disk read only. So be careful what you do. I would just leave it as is and not try to do the extra little bit. So next, if we click on disk, there is our current disk that we're using. If we click on edit, we can enable or disable power management, acoustics, and shutdown or spin down time. Smart enables smart drive access so you can tell what's going on with your drive. Read management is for if you have more than one device, and so currently we don't. File system is where our file system is located. So our, so our extra portion of drive that we got by the share root FS is shown here. And so that's this one right here, the SDA2. And so it's currently mounted in online. Next we'll go to users. This is where you would add a user. So you, we can do that right now. We'll add a user. Uh, put in a password. You can add them to different groups, public keys, and then click Save. Apply and Yes. And if you want to edit anything, you can click Edit and say you want to add groups. Like we'll add SSH. Then it automatically edits it there. And then Apply and Yes. You can add privileges. Uh, right now we don't have any shared folders, so nothing is there. Or we can delete the accounts. You can group users, and then, so what we're going to do now is create a share folder that then we can share. Click on shared folders, click add, and we're going to name this media. And so our device is the SDA2 that we saw, SDA2 that we saw earlier. We're going to leave this open for everyone to see and then we're going to click Save. You can do other things right here, but for the sake of this demonstration, it will be everybody. Click Save, Apply, and Yes. Now, down below, you can do FTP, NFS, RSync, SMB. So we're going to click on SMB. We're going to enable that. We're going to click Shares. We're going to add a share. That will be the media folder that we just created. And we're going to go down to public, guests allowed, and then click save. 
and then apply and yes and then click save and apply and yes so now our folder will be visible on our network and shouldn't require a login because we didn't ask for one so if we go to our network we can see there is open media vault and it's connecting as guest and we click on it and there's nothing in there currently I don't know why it says CD-ROM actually and then if we go down further then we can click on system information again this will give us our general system information how much memory we've used processes that are running performance statistics and just the general report now if we scroll back up now we can go to OMV extras click on docker and so we're going to change our docker storage so for this pathway we need the absolute path okay so how we find the absolute path is we have to go to shared folders go to one of the names and then a down arrow will appear go to columns click on absolute path and so here you can see the absolute path is just slash media so we're going to click on omb extras again go to docker and then put slash media and then everything else can be used as is you can also install yacht so yacht is a way of installing different docker containers or programs uh, i find it's just easiest to do it the old-fashioned way which is copy and paste so there's a couple ways of installing docker and so the first is you can install it here the next is if you install portainer which is a GUI for Docker, it will also install Docker. So we're just going to go under Partainer and install. And now it's time for some coffee. Once that's done, click Close. And now you can open up Partainer, which is right there. Then put in a user password. Create user. Then click on Docker. And then Connect. And then click Local and so now we're into our docker container and so why i like docker is and why it's so popular it is a very easy way to add programs keep them updated without using a lot of extra space and i have further videos about using docker and installing different docker programs and i'll leave a link for those down below or just look in the or just look on my channel because they're Basically, I've made probably at least 100 on installing different programs. So that's the basics of installing OpenMediaVault on an Intel Mac uh, to make it a media server. So the next step would be just to install your media programs, and that would be through Docker and uh, those I have on my channel. And if you like this video today, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. And a special thank you to all my supporters who without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about supporting the channel you love. Thank you.